Now I'm going to try to record this video using these tangled ass headphones. Although I'm sure that you won't care. Well, you see, Fringe Elements has brought up an interesting point, and that's that because anarchism really just means anti archons, that there's such an abstract degree of subjectivity to this word, and because of that, he dislikes using it. And the easiest reply to this would be that it's the genetic fallacy, because he's basing this upon the very etymology of a word, and how it's defined because of this, but he's actually makes sense here, because Fringe is saying that because of this, you have to deal with this conflict between who are real anarchists and who aren't real anarchists. For example, a lot of people say that anarchism with democracy doesn't make sense because a large collective is an archon. Some would say the same about monarchism, and now there's anarcho-monarchism. Some say the same about social implications, too, not just uh, political implications like capitalism, communism, socialism. It even goes into economic contexts like free markets and stuff of that varying degree. So I could understand why he describes himself as being an anti-status since that's a little bit more specific. There's some degree of subjectivity to what is and isn't a state, but French likes to call states a law-making agency, not a law-taking agency. And I can agree with that since the father of the right, Plato, has said that the only thing states should have control over are police, military, and governments, or these legal making agencies. And because of that, you can tell that there's some truth to what he's saying. Here's where I tend to draw the line. Now, even though there's such a philosophical broadness in the very etymology of anarchism, what I like to do, and this is something that I like to do, is I like to not just focus on what is or isn't an archon, but I like to look at relationships, because relationships are very relevant to political philosophy since politics is about the social implications of society and when there's social implications there's a lot of different varying degrees of relationships and what I like to focus on is the relationship known as the hierarchy what is and isn't that kind of relationship that kind of top bottom perpetuating establishment of a relationship rather than a bottom-up emergent relationship. That doesn't mean I'm against all degrees of establishment, just the ones that constantly keep going. For example, if there is an entrepreneur and he brings together factories of production to establish a firm, I think he already did his job and that's it. Or if there's a landlord who's trying to get all your real property, um, not real property, rents, and he's using this as a source of eternal revenue, then I might see a problem. But if he's just using this rent for now so that he can complete the building and then after that he no longer has that private property and he just has a share of personal property I can tell from that that that's okay and then he can just do this constantly buy a lot of personal property to get to turn it into private property develop it 
with a lot of guys who would pay rent. And then when that's done, he can make it just another share of personal property for everybody. But that's just a non sequitur. So how am I going to conclude this video? Calling yourself an anarchist isn't for everybody. Because not all people feel that they're they should be broad. Anarchism is a broad term. Maybe they should be marginally more specific. Maybe they're anti-corporatists like Noam Chomsky who's still a statist. Maybe he calls himself an anarchist or to some degree Murray Rothbard who'd support a corporation but one of maybe the old school kind the ones of people just investing in this big mutual fund but not the kind that we have now and it just shows that some things become archons that were once not archons and relationships tend to become hierarchical and politics just becomes this big vocabulary orgasm of stuff we don't want to hear all in all, again, this was a good video by Fringe. I'm glad that he's back. It's been three months since he's put up some quality work. And while I love what he's doing with Tumblr, that thing's going to be down for a while. So I'm glad that he's stepping up that shit. Me, I'm going to focus a little bit more on helping other people on YouTube and less of my theoretical videos. Alright, so this has been Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick. No, really, it's really big.